the Devils. Jade all back to knock out some little goddamn questions. And today's questions we're going to be going over. I did not prove shit. I just looked at the last video I recorded and saw which video I left off on. So the next in line, just brought it up, is pitch shifting vocals cheating. Just get the job done, goddammit. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. None of these fucking Cleveland douche canoes even know what the fuck that means. Always fucking thrown around there by a bunch of slack asses, in my fucking opinion. Uh, 951 views two weeks ago. It seems like a hell of a lot longer um, than two weeks ago I did this video. I don't know, for whatever reason, I kind of remember talking about this. It seems like forever ago that I recorded it. But whatever. It was posted two weeks ago, goddammit. And didn't hit the fucking thousand, though, devils. Goddammit. Uh, 199 comments, though. So get the fucking shovel, devils, and let's start fucking digging. Because like I said, I did not proof reject fucking shit. This is kind of the way I prefer to do it. I know there's some pauses in between and shit like that, but tough fucking shit. It's the way I like to do it. I like it off the cuff. Uh, here we go. I see a question mark from Eric V. I read an interview with the Death Doom band Morgion a long time ago, and when they were asked if they were doing death vocals, one of the guys answered that, if you can distort your guitars, then why not vocals? Very good fucking response, in my, in my opinion. For me, I love pitch shifter vocals, gut lax, golem of war, etc. The more gar the more garbled, the better. I don't know if you've been gar garbled or gurgled or whatever, but uh, I happen to just kind of agree with that statement. A few people reply to him. And they're, uh, Joe Dinkins, heinous killings had the predator vocals. Yeah, it's funny you say that because uh, when I listened to it recently, the Hung by Barbed Wire, like I said, I thought it was great. The main thing that stood out was the vocals. And uh, to me, there was just parts that it sounded like a fucking guy being like, like fucking throat slashed underwater, for lack of better descriptions. But it's funny when that came out. I guess I do remember hearing a uh, Baxter talking about you called the Predator vocals, and uh, it's just funny when you said that. That I was like, oh fuck, uh, that's yeah. And I don't even know if I thought I listened to Heinous Killings back in the day, but I guess not. I mean, it felt like a totally new listen. Um, so that is correct. The Predator vocals. Predator is one of my all-time favorite movies. The first two. Definitely gonna check out that fucking new one coming out too. What does it go direct to goddamn uh, TV? Whatever it's beyond. Hulu, Netflix, whatever the fuck service catches it. But nonetheless, I think it comes out the uh, first week of August. Jade Dog will definitely be checking that out because, you know, yeah, all the later Predators shit are not always, you know, the coolest. But I definitely check out every Predator because, if nothing else, I love the character. You know what I mean? Brad Van Derzy. Have you heard the Crimson Ghosts from Germany? Uh, it's funny you bring that up. I guess I didn't realize they're from Germany. I have a CD by them. I forget. It's a, one of their full-length albums. I literally have it uh, pulled out of my fucking CD rack at, at my, my home office where I usually record my videos as, like, one of my next listens. Because I was going through my uh, disc and shit like that. I was looking for I was looking for something in particular. I came around. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I haven't listened to this in a while. But, yeah, it's like Misfits Worship. Uh, it's been quite some time since I listened to it. Uh, so it won't be it. It won't be a new listen, but I can't air guitar it off the top of my head now, but I'll remember it as I go, because I've heard it probably, I've probably listened about five or six times, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't know what else they have. I just have the one disc. What is it? Maybe something tomb, or uh forget, but it is a full length album. Don't know if that's their only full length. That's just the only thing. I think it was uh, Kevin from uh, Grave One that told me about them, if I'm not mistaken, about 10 years ago, and I went out and picked the disc up. That was really good. I know you're a Misfits fan, and this is right up your alley. Sure was, brah, brah. Check out the first album, Leaving the Tomb. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Leaving the Tomb. Yeah, that's the new something, too, right? Yeah, it's fucking great. I, I own it, just the CD, uh, not an LP. Don't even know if there's an LP, and it's on the list of Pile of Shit. But yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. If you like Misfits, it's a, it's a good amount of Misfits worship. It's a must have. Thanks for the HHR sticker and my idea side boot. Love your videos. Yeah, we actually, uh, good pickup, too. I bought that, what is it? Uh, Eternal Something. We got them from Europe. Uh, not a Rika Death release, but a, a DSI side boot is on the Legion Tour. Sounds really good, too. Highly recommend picking up from HH. We got to restock in. The first stock sold right away, and we told the guy to take all the rest of your copies. So, whoa, well, I don't know, we got another 30 in or whatever. Highly recommend getting it. It sounds fucking great. And the cool ass cover art, too. Done fucking right. So, uh, I was definitely stoked about that, and I picked up one myself. From Hama Chan Shutter 80. Never seen you, Rob. Oh, that's your goddamn shoulder. Kind of. Remember that goddamn user idea. So welcome to the channel. Let's see what you got to fucking ask. Hey, J-Dog, with everybody talking negatively about keyboards and death metal being like oil and water, <laughs> who's saying that? <laughs> what are your thoughts on trap beats? 
trap beats uh, being used to death metal. What the fuck are trap beats? Am I just out of the loop once again? For example, a band like Flu is using them. And vice versa. Trap artists incorporating metal instrumentation and death slash black and style vocals into theirs. Oh, uh, the vocal part I think is cool. Got no problem with that. I always like unique vocals and when you can do different sounding vocals, hence like the heinous killings why I thought was cool. It's almost impossible to get like a different vocal sound. Not impossible, but you know what I mean? Just about everything done. That I'm cool with, but trap vocals, I, I mean, trap, what do you call it, trap beats? I, I, I literally have zero clue what the fuck that is. So if I'm out of the loop and I'm a complete fucking retard, and that's been around for 40 years, J-Dog, where the fuck you been? Feel free to put that in the comments, but I'm just being honest, I don't know what that is. Well, lurking fear, and then a question, I love the sound of pitch shifting vocals. Yeah, there's a lot that I like too, but I can't stand trigger drums most of the time. I'm hit or miss, I'm 50, yeah. There's definitely ones that sound like shit, like the, um, what is it, the second mix of Master, the Master Master album, the first album. Uh, the triggers sound like absolute dog shit on that, but the first mix, which is, I believe, the mix, I'm almost positive that's the one that Hammerheart Records just reissued, the one that sounds good. And um, the second album, On the Seventh Day, God Created Master. It's been forever since I listened to that album because um, I liked, uh, I thought the songs were good, but yeah, the triggers on that were God ass fucking awful. And I never went back and listened to it in about 10 years. But I remember it being like unlistenable fucking song for triggers. It's one of the reasons I soared on some of the early 90s more sound albums. Yeah. The snares always sounded weird. Yeah, I agree that they're not the best sound of fucking triggers in some of those. That I mean, I, but a lot of them are such classic albums and they kind of like just get a pass. I believe on Cannibal's first two albums, they have a note that they use no effects of the vocals. Yeah, I kind of remember that too. At least I butchered at birth for sure. I kind of remember them putting something in there about that, yeah. People keep asking about least favorites, but they don't ever specify, even though I said multiple times. Uh, Lady Lover 90, question, what is your favorite song from your least favorite album by a band you like? Well, I guess it kind of did clarify, by a band you like, so least favorite band, favorite song, though. I highly doubt right off the cuff I'm going to be able to think of my um, the number one least favorite and then favorite song by them. But who did I put in there? Like, uh, so I said uh, Megadeth, right? Um, favorite song by Megadeth, because that's definitely one of my least favorite bands, without a doubt. Uh, I do like the first two albums, but definitely one of my least favorite bands. Um, favorite song by them then. Uh, maybe looking down the cross. That's a, that's a good song. Maybe that. Skull beneath the skin. Like one of those. It's a flickcroft. That would be fucking sick if Hell's did the heinous killings LP, brah. I would definitely be worrying copy. Yeah, so try and we'll see where it goes though. So don't get your hopes too too much up just because if you if you guys even knew the amount of shit that I had ideas of at either A I tried doing or B I'd even bother asking because I know it's gonna fucking go nowhere. It's gonna be the typical no fucking reply bullshit. Or it's gonna be, oh well, I don't have files, or oh I don't I, I can't I can't get a hold of this, oh that so and so has it, or this label owns it, all that fucking just bullshit. Um You'd be shocked. I mean, there's a laundry list of goodies, classics. That's that's 80% of the time, that's usually the answer you fucking get. Is that, to be honest with you. There's some bullshit in the way. Nail Black Metal. Question, did you see Kevin Bacon wearing an immolation shirt and dancing to Footloose on the interwebs this morning? Love that guy. I did not. I didn't think Kevin Bacon. So is he one of those guys like Reaper said years ago, like a celebrity just wearing death metal shirts and he literally doesn't even know what it is? Or does he actually like immolation? I'm very surprised if Kevin Bacon likes immolation. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Kevin Bacon other than, you know, he's a movie star. And the movies that I like is with him that I, whenever I think of Kevin Bacon was the first Tremors movie. That was the first movie I've ever seen him with. Uh, I like that. And then uh, what's that movie where he's invisible? Hollow Man? Is that called? Invisible Man? Hollow Man? You know, where he's uh, invisible? I uh, thought that was a good movie, too. Uh, other than that, I don't even know if I've even seen him. I'm sure I've seen other movies. With, oh, he's in uh, also, too, that uh, that X-Men movie where he plays um, uh, 
drawn a blank the guy's name. Sebastian something in it. Uh, maybe Health, the character I forget, but uh, from the Hellfire Club in the comic books, it was what the X-Men uh, in the past, you know, the classic shit, uh, which I, I like that one too. So those are the only three movies I can even think of that I know of. I'm probably seen something else that I'm drawing a blank. I know he's in a ton of movies, but most of them I know I haven't seen. So that's all I know about the guy. Uh, I, if you like simulation, cool, but I'd be, it's definitely shocking to say the least. Good man, thanks for answering my question, brah. Are you sure you don't like early glam Terra? <laughs> you got to be honest, that metal magic rules. What about power metal? To be honest with you, I'm pretty sure power metal I've heard, but that's it. And the reason I heard it, when I first found out about it, it was like the early 2000s. We got some, um, yeah, probably early 2000s, maybe, but early to like that mid, like about 05 to like 08, somewhere around there is when I first heard about those. We got some bootleg versions from, I think, the United Kingdom, and it was a bootleg LP version of a power metal. Like, what the fuck is this? I think I did listen to it, and I recall, I don't remember it, but I recall not liking it at all. And then all those shit. I just, just when I see that band, I'm just like, well, I'm just, I don't, it's, I don't think anything. I'm just like, I just keep, keep on flipping. Like, well, why would I even check this out? I don't, I don't care. Like, they don't interest me in the least fucking bit. A little over 90. Uh, I am a guy. Oh, oh, <laughs> would I ask if you're a chick or a dude? Yeah, I am a guy, Adam. The same Adam that sent some cool shit to Reaper for Hellcast a few times, including that sticker you have on your bumper, I dog. Oh, okay. That was you, Layla Lover? I guess I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew the guy's name was Adam, but Layla Lover and Adam don't go together, so I didn't know that. Uh, I have forgotten more metal than you. And it's still on there, bro. I've definitely gotten a few comments on that. People think that's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it was you. Sweet. I will definitely remember now. Cool. Elvis God, I agree with this. The vocals on Rochevor and Human Waste and Cam Lee are fucking sick. I agree. Like, for example, the best suffocation release of all time is definitely Human Waste. The vocals, the songs, the rawness, everything. Don't be wrong. FG The Forgotten is great. Breeding the Spawn, uh, I like it. The thing is, people say, oh, all that album's not as good because the sound. It's not the sound. The songs just aren't very... And all, honestly, the songs on that album aren't very memorable at all. Like, every time I listen to that album, I've heard that album at least, I don't know, minimally 20 times in my lifetime. I own it. I like it. But it's not memorable. What for? It's not memorable for shit. Uh, then uh, Pierce From Within, it's definitely got a lot of fucking breakdown boring parts, in my opinion. Um, it's definitely got good, really good songs, too. And then uh, Despise the Sun, I thought was good, but I mean, nothing, Human Waste is the best. And it's funny because, like, nobody else ever fucking says that. It's always, usually, Effigy. I'm sure some of the uh, younger bucks than Kai Gal might say uh, Pierce from Within. Uh, but I, I highly, highly disagree. Metal Musician 6996, J-Dog, if you could hit the gym with one bodybuilder, who would it be? Fuck, that's a really good question. I've kind of thought about that before. What it would be, it wouldn't be somebody like um, that necessarily I idolize. Not that I wouldn't, but they probably wouldn't be my number one pick. I would choose somebody that I can learn something from. Like, for example, like Flex Wheeler, like who's like one of maybe my favorite physique of all time in his prime. I probably wouldn't. He's such a genetic freak that it's like, dude, what, what am I going to learn from you? I mean, he just... He basically didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Like, I don't want to say he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, but I'm just, he's not like a, you don't take information from guys like that. Um, when he was alive, someone like John Meadows, he would be good. Um, Evan Santapani would be good. He's something I would, somebody I would train with. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's, uh, Those two guys probably come out like John Meadows is no longer alive, but when he was, and then uh, but currently alive, probably first person that's coming to mind is Evan Santapani, a guy that actually is intelligent and uh, definitely, I mean, genetically gifted. But it just seems like he had a he had to be a little bit more methodical, or, or at least maybe whether he did or didn't have to be, at least was. But well, first pick would probably have been John Meadows.
Matt Powers, Yo J Dog, did you listen to the new Lord Delisle album? I think somebody didn't answer that before. I did not. What, what was the uh, what's the new one called? Um, I don't even know if that one came through. I just know the first two albums. That's all I know. I listened to a later one, whether it been Angel Grinder, I'm not even sure. I remember just playing, eh, not the same shit. But the first two albums are great. I own both of those. Oscar G, I paid eighty dollars for that heinous killing CD on eBay. Totally worth it. There you go. Fucking long out of print. It's it's due for a fucking rebus. Because what I want to do is LPs and a CD for that very reason. Because I knew it goes for it's long sold out. Nick, you're the only way you're getting it now is top dollar. I mean, which is I I, I kind of like that. It's cool as fuck. But I mean, it is it is. But so but to make it reavailable. You know what I mean, Ryan Idzerta two. Definitely comment on you before, bro. J Dog, thoughts on the on Grave second album? Is it just me, or does that album suck compared to the first album? <laughs> like all polish and shit with keyboards. So you're talking about the second full length, right? And here I die satisfied. Uh, no, that's the EP. Uh, you'll never see heaven, right? So you're for, you're referring to you'll never see heaven, right? The, the full length. Then there's and here I die satisfied. Uh, EP. I like both of those. I do. Uh, the first album is better. The demos are the best. I think the demos are even better than the first album, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't remember any there's, there's shitty keys on Grave. I mean, nothing stood out to me as like sound like shit in the second one. I will say this. Am I the only person that knows this? Again, I do like the album. Maybe, yeah, You'll Never See has a couple parts too, but definitely, and here I die satisfied. Did you ever guys notice that it's got a look like... Reaper doesn't listen to Grave or, you know, a lot of death metal bands, so he doesn't, he's, he's, he wouldn't know, but like, he'd be the type that would do this. If he walked in on this, like, let's say I was playing him in the shop, and let's say he walked in, I get it, he'd be like, dude, what the fuck? With some sideboard cap. And I, I gotta admit, that I, it kind of does have some parts like that. Even though I do like it, it's an enjoy, and it's enjoyable and catchy, it's, it's pushing the fucking boundaries for that fucking, it's a little homeboy. It's got a little bit of homework, but I could totally see Reaper. He, if he heard it, he would go, dude, what the fucking homeboy-ass fucking shit are you listening to? Put on the side words, caps. And I would have totally disagreed with him on that. Uh, did you, am I the only one that ever noticed? Like, I've never actually heard someone like, like Reaper never walked in on that album or like that, and I never heard anyone say that. But I've always been in the back of my mind. I was like, it kind of is. I, it definitely kind of is. Have any of you guys ever fucking noticed that? Because I've never heard anyone say that. Dude, it's a little bouncy. It's a little fucking... Not the whole thing. I'm not saying began that, but especially on the EP. And I think there's a couple parts on You'll Never See Heaven. Not the title track, but like again, definitely in Here I Die Satisfied. There's definitely some parts. Not on like songs like Black Dawn and shit. Black Dawn was the uh, was on the Corpse demo initially. 86 Corpse demo and the original recording is even better, but it's, it's good on there too. So, but not on the Black Dawn song. There's none of that, but uh, <laughs> let me know if you guys ever noticed that shit. Yeah, I still like it, but it's definitely. Yeah, I'm ready to put a side words cap on when I'm listening to that shit. Gotta, gotta be honest with you. Ninox111. Hey, J Dog, Nunslar to me sounds like 1349. Do you agree? I definitely do not agree. Granted, I will give you this, though. I've never, I haven't listened to 1349 and. 20 years, probably around there. If they've been around that long, but some early 2000s for sure. I just remember it being fucking blasty black metal that, uh, to me, I'm just like, oh, this again? Uh, I think it was around the time I heard Sethereal and things like that. I'm just like, oh, it's fine. But, and, um, Unslaughter's like, to be honest with you, I don't think anybody sounds like Unslaughter. That's kind of why I, I like them too. It's not just because I know them and release them, is it's a death metal band that who literally who sounds like Unslaughter? I can't think of anybody. Whether it be Don's vocals or just a mid pace beat, they have a blast here and there too, but it's like 80s death thrash with today. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I, who else fucking sounds like them? I just put them in the death metal category and literally nobody sounds like them. Um, so, some blasting 1349, at least if, if correct me if, if the 1349 is not blasting black metal, then correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I remember. Uh, I heard one album. It was probably their very first album. I remember they were a uh, brand new band and I remember. Um, but, you know, that's funny. Uh, I think it was Don that I asked. I think when I saw the name 1349, I'm like, what the fuck? So I know this is going to be a, I, this is a year and it's re resembling something, but I was like, I wouldn't name my band that, maybe an album. And I was like, hey, like, what does 1349 mean? And uh, this is back when he was like, dude, who knows? He's like, probably the year Christianity invaded Norway or something stupid. 
Um, so <laughs> here's your fucking Nunslaughter and uh, 1349 combined thing. Uh, but I haven't listened to me. If they have like a later round that sounds like Nunslaughter, then, then that's news to me. But what I heard, I don't recall. Again, we're going back 20 years. It's, it's not 20 days old, the round came out in 2005. Whatever, 18, 16, 17, somewhere around there. It's around 20 fucking years ago. Early 2000s, that's for goddamn sure. We've we'll goddamn one more. <laughs> I won't say a whole lot about this, but you're asking, uh, Abby Simmons, J Dog, any chance Hells could get some copies of the Dark Descent 2 CD reissue of Immortalis and Dictum De Mortis in stock? Uh, if you want to know, I don't know. Go ask. Go, go over and email uh, Matt at Dark Descent. He doesn't reply to us anymore. Um, have a decent idea why. Uh, not going to say why. Uh, nothing we did wrong. If, if it's the case, then I've lost a ton of respect for him if it's the case. Uh, believe in lies and shit where it's like, well, dude, you've dealt with us. You know us. Why don't you at least ask us about it? Um, I'm sure you can use your imaginations or do a little digging over what you think the case is, but I'm not going to sit there and throw shit out. And I don't know that for sure. It's just a hell of a coincidence when this went down. It doesn't reply. So it's like, so you're willing to lose thousands of dollars with the orders based off a lie. And you've known us and watched these ass. Like, it's just, that's that, that's that wimpy ass talk. Again, I'm not, maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe I didn't get the emails, but throw them over there. Tell them, well, yeah, then apply to hell's advent. Like, Fuck, you don't like business, man? Uh, so yeah, ask him. I don't know. Doesn't reply. So, love to, though, yeah. I've gotten tons of shit from him in the past, but uh, yeah, it's been a good six months, so it doesn't reply. So, who the fuck knows? Ask him for showing this email. I mean, show him this video, something, because I have no fucking clue. I don't do. I'm at Maryland shit. I know he's met my brothers. Like, who knows? But, anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Comments, questions, you know what to do. Put them in the goddamn comments box, and I'll get them answered bright and early. Later, goddammit.